Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leaks TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. It's October 18th, 1980, and the Toronto Maple Leafs are set to host the Philadelphia Flyers at Maple Leaf Gardens. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The Flyers have Bill Barber, Reggie Leach, and Rick McLeish. The Leafs are led by Daryl Sittler, Boria Salming, and Rick Vi. Hello once again, everyone. I'm Joe Bowen, and welcome to another edition of Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics right here on Leafs TV. It's the start of the 1980-81 season, and the high-flying Flyers had 116 points a year ago, only to lose in Game 6 in overtime to Bob Nystrom and his overtime goal with the New York Islanders in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final. They arrived to meet the Maple Leafs, who are in a rebuilding mode. They had just 75 points the previous season. Gone are Tagger Williams and Lanny McDonald. But Boreas Salming has just received a brand new 11-year contract courtesy owner Harold Ballard. The Flyers have plenty of toughness, and we can expect a pretty physical match here tonight at Maple Leaf Gardens. The purveyors of the Puck Palaces tonight are Phil Mirror for the Flyers, and for the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's Yuri Call Me George Sierra. Because it's October 18, 1980, the Leafs and Flyers, and you're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by Rogers Cable. I don't like to brag, but I do have the hardest shot. I think I have the hardest shot. The Raider gun is broken. Leafs fans, head down to Air Canada Centre on December 6th at 12 p.m. and watch as your Leafs compete for bragging rights in the 2009 Toronto Maple Leaf Skills Competition presented by Rogers. Proceeds from the day's activities will benefit the MLSE Team Up Foundation and the NHLPA Goals and Dreams Fund. For tickets, call 416-872-5000 or visit Ticketmaster.ca. Come out and watch us compete, and we'll let you be the judge. For the Ice Girls today, we'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do Ice Girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh... You know what I'd like? A big salad. The Flyers will have three players over the 30-goal mark this season, led by Bill Barber and his 43. Rick McLeish will have 38 and Reggie Leach, 34. The Leafs will get 43 goals from Daryl Sittler, 35 from Bill Lego, and 33 more from future 50-goal shooter Rick Vi. Brantford, Ontario native Pat Hickey would grow up in that area and play junior hockey for Hamilton and the Red Wings before starring for the Toronto Toros of the World Hockey Association. Taken in the second round by the Rangers in 1973, Hickey would join the New Yorkers for five seasons before being dealt to Colorado and later to Toronto in that same year in the Lanny McDonald trade. Hickey would play parts of three seasons in Toronto with additional stops in Quebec and St. Louis. In 646 NHL games, Pat Hickey scored 192 goals and totaled 404 points. And he joins us here tonight on Leafs TV to go back to October the 18th, 1980, and the start of the 1980-81 season. The Leafs hosting the big, bad Philadelphia Flyers. And Joe Crozier is uh, piloting this uh, group of Maple Leafs that have, uh, obviously, in the last year and a half, Pat, and you were a part of a huge trade that had all kinds of ramifications, both uh, publicly and in the dressing room, that has changed the makeup of this team dramatically. For sure, I think Joe ended la in, the, in the previous year, and uh, just going back to that introduction there, that's a great all-expense-paid career there, right? Yes, I, it is. I, I, yes, I, I saw a lot of great towns, <laughs> and some of those franchises aren't here anymore. That's right. But, uh, you, you've made those places <laughs> what they are today, defunct. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Only Brant Brantford's still alive, you know, producing thank hockey players. Thank goodness. Yeah, but it was uh, it was a very exciting time, and I think Joe wanted uh, three scoring lines. Then we were a very very quick team. We spent some time together. He actually sent uh, about half the team to power skating 
It's one thing I don't I didn't think I needed at the time, but I thank him for it because it was uh, it was pretty exciting the guys getting together. Uh, and we, we came out with a roar in the, the first of that season, and we had, uh, we had nothing but really good things uh, that we were thinking about, and being a team. And uh, you had uh, Daryl Sittler and Boria Salming and, uh, and a guy like Ian Turnbull. He, he always brought everything together with a, with a laugh at the end of the day. Now, uh, coming from Colorado, uh, you don't spend an awful <coughs> lot of time uh, in Colorado with the uh, Rockies before the trade for Lanny McDonald was made. What was that like coming, really, back home, obviously, but uh, coming in a trade for a very popular player, and what was it like in the dressing room? Well, I think it's, uh, what, 23 years later now? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can tell some scoops, but I think we, we in 79, went to the uh, Stanley Cup Finals with the Rangers, and, and I had been there five and a half years, and we had some real dynamic people and some real chemistry amongst, from Phil Esposito right on down to Ron Duguay, and Dave Farish, who was on this team. Uh, and I think that's why we, uh, you know, we played over our head. We beat the Islanders that year that we weren't supposed to. We beat the Flyers that year we weren't supposed to. And I think we accomplished a lot. When I came to Toronto, what I found was there wasn't, there wasn't much chemistry there because we walked into one of the favorite players, uh, you know, leaving. And then, so there was a lot of recipe that had to go into it. And I don't know if uh, Mr. Emlach, uh, you know, maybe had that coach in place at the time that, uh, that did that. But Joe is a real good hockey man, and he... Uh, he put us together on the ice in that practice because he had some structured practices. Um, but I think as time went on, um, that getting goal scoring from three different lines uh, changed. I think just after this sort of great start we had, we went on a, a road trip to Los Angeles. And I think at the time, Daryl Sittler was kind of struggling. And then, so it was more, practices were more designed to uh, get Daryl off the mark and, uh, and the power play and things like that and some of the line combinations. But we had an exciting team with that Lori Boschman line. I think we called it the kid line at the time. And Mr. Emlet grabbed me uh, really early in the season, and he said, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the, the previous season when uh, Derlego and Vibe kind of struggled a little bit. I think Ricky was always, you know, he was, always had that, that jump in him. But Billy, who could score some goals, so uh, Mr. Emlet grabbed me at training camp and said, uh, you're going to play with these guys and you're going to stick with them and you're going to take care of them. So that's sort of what, what happened. We knew that we were going to play together, so we started to do fun things before and after practice. <laughs> now, in New York, Fred Shiro had you playing with, yeah. with a different combination. Yeah, I had the same task. And I, and I don't know if New York and Toronto uh, talked, but uh, getting back to that trade, I think that whole Lanny McDonald, Joel Quenville, myself and Paymont was a, was a, a prearranged deal like months before because I didn't spend too much time in Colorado and when I ended up in Toronto I think it was all done before that but um, and Punch grabbed me in the in the in the, the Bowery's of uh, Madison Square Garden once and asked me about uh, a couple of other players like Farish and Greshner uh, he, and he and he said would you like them to come to us too I said <laughs> sure <laughs> I always like a buddy but a couple of years before was John Ferguson actually brought in the, the Swedes. And he never finished the year because uh, he got fired and then they brought in Fred Shiro. And a funny story is uh, at the beginning of the year, um, Fred Shiro, who's pretty you know, open and everything, he said to the press that Pat Hickey will be playing with the two Swedes. End of story. And no one could get that because no one could figure out what Fred was doing from day to day. Why is he telling us that 80 games and uh, he's made this decision? He, and so one reporter asked him, why are you playing Hickey with the Swedes? Because you've got, you know, you've got Duguay and Murdoch and all these other guys. And Freddie, in his, in, in his wisdom, he said, ask me that at the end of the season and I'll tell you why. Right? And I didn't know any about this at the time. But the smart reporters in New York, they asked him at the end of the season. And he said, well, I had to play Hickey with the Swedes because... Uh, Hickey was the only guy on the team that would not try to change them. <laughs> it's not and I think that was very smart. And if you look at this game tonight and you look at Yuri Sira, I th he played a game tonight like Dominic Hasek. And I think when Dominic Hasek was in Chicago, they tried to change him. But when he got out into, into Buffalo and beyond, uh, he just played his game. And I think in Toronto here, Yuri Sira would have been a different icon if we had just had to let him play his game. But Instead I don't think... Trying to change his style. And trying to change his style. Because mm -hmm. he couldn't shoot the puck from the net over the blue line. So, you know, don't handle the puck, I used to say. Well, <laughs> leave it for Salming. He'll get it over the blue line. But, I mean, uh, I, like in this game tonight, if you watch it, Yuri was, uh, he was fantastic. He stopped Leach and Clark and Barber, like, constantly. And, uh, and, and we were scoring, so we beat him 6-2. Oh, well, now we're not giving it away here. Now we have to oh, keep geez. this. Yeah, yeah don't. That, that, that that <laughs> disregard those, uh, that uh, comment. Yeah. But what we do have is the Flyers arriving in town. 
on a roll, and this is a team that uh, went to the Stanley Cup final and lost in Game 6 as Bob Nystrom scored the overtime winner. But we're going to take Pat Hickey back to October the 18th, 1980. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade. Now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds, so you don't want to get caught in there. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Oh, no way. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, I know. OK, moving on. Stanfield's Polar Therm, winter underwear for men. in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs after the first period. Boreas Salming, Pat Hickey and Laurie Boschman have scored for Toronto and Bill Barber has scored for the Flyers and Dave Hodge is standing by with him. Talking to some of the Islanders last season when they were in their slump people wondered what's wrong with the Islanders and they thought they might have had a little problem getting ready for the regular season games because they'd been so good in the season the year before and then had lost in the playoffs they kind of thought maybe they were thinking they should do it the other way around. Do you think there's any of those thoughts running through your head that Look, you had such a great regular season, didn't win the Stanley Cup. Is there a problem with incentive now? Well, I think, Dave, with uh, the streak we had going last year, uh, I think it's in the back of our mind. I think people expect us to turn around and do the same thing again this year. And, uh, and it might affect our play in a bit, but still it's no excuse. Uh, right now we have Kenny Lindsman out. We have a few injuries that are hurting us, but still we have to go back to the basics of hockey. And uh, I think we can do that. It, it's up for the older players uh, like Bobby Clark and Reggie and myself and a few other guys to, to pick up the tempo to help the younger players. And uh, we just have to go out and work all the harder. You mentioned some of the older players. You are one of only four remaining members of the first Stanley Cup team in Philadelphia in 1974. And that team had such great identity. Everybody knew everybody on the Philadelphia Flyers when they saw them play. The transition has been pretty smooth. Certainly last year's successful season tells us that. But I wonder whether that identity has happened with this team as, it, as you had in, in 74 and 75. Well, I, I, it's, uh, I think we proved a lot uh, to, uh, as, as, as a team to a lot of people last year that they didn't expect us to, to do that well, and we did it. And I think the reason being is that we had a lot of new players coming in last year that had to prove themselves, and uh, they played excellent hockey for us. And uh, we had some great goaltending, which I think is probably the biggest factor in the game. And uh, we blended together as a team, and we worked hard. And that's what we have to do again this year if we want to come even close to what we accomplished last year. Thank you, Bill, and good luck. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Bill Barber, who uh, I guess his antics uh, brought about at least one rule change. We now have diving in the National Hockey League. He was very good. He was very good at that, but he was also a very good player. And that line was outstanding. Yeah, I, I got to play against Bill. He was always on an outstanding line. In Kitchener Rangers, they call it the, the triple B line. It was uh, Barber, Byers, and Blanchard, I think, was... was, was Tubby Blanchard. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think he was a first-round draft pick of the New York Rangers, mm -hmm. who never... Actually, he never showed up. He showed uh, up for well, a day Well, he, he didn't score much on me in Sudbury. That's why he oh. wasn't... Yeah, he didn't quite make it as big as he thought he would. You grow actually, up. now he is as big as he thought he would. He's, <laughs> exactly. Well, never. That's another story. Well, say, say hello. <laughs> and then when Bill went to uh, the Flyers, uh, he he was about a year older than I was, but he slid right in there with uh, Leach and Clark, and it was great. But I remember John Ferguson, 
when he coaches. He, he, before, you know, he was always trying to educate the referees. <laughs> That's a dive out there. So he, he threw a water bottle at a linesman. I think it was Scampanella. Uh, and he just said, that water's frozen out there. <laughs> you can't be diving all the time. And that was like the best line. But after that, it started. But, you know, he just had to get better at it. And he did. I think that's the one thing that he did is, I mean, you should just go by him and brush him. And he'd, you'd wonder why he's falling down. But... You're 30 seconds box. later, you're in the box. So. Yeah, but they were—they had a great chemistry. Uh, uh, Leach and company uh, could shoot the puck. And Clark was obviously uh, uh, a tremendous playmaker. And, he was a and distraction, that guy. He was <laughs> always. He could because he could score. He could he could he could make a play, and and you knew you always wanted to focus on him. And you knew you were going to hate him at the end of the night. Exactly. He was uh, he was uh, as Harry Neal has often said. Played with very little conscience. Well, I think a lot of it is like just like that picture, though. I think it, that was an age where the players were were actually accountable and invited in to try to figure it out from equipment uh, to to even strategies and forechecking and you know this neutral trap zone and all that. Someone in the 90s just put a name on it. I mean, we did that all the time, and the Flyers are probably best at it. I got to tell you a story. Like Pete Stemkowski and I caught. Tony Esposito in the Chicago Stadium with fishnet between his legs. That was the night we caught him. And we're sitting there going, like, that's a goal. No, look, it's, there's a net in there. But, and then tubes on the, on the uh, suspenders, so when the puck came, it didn't go over there. It just went to his feet. He could freeze it. So, but there was a lot of that going on. And I think the Flyers with Fred Shiro gave them that latitude. He just delegated the responsibility. And uh, Clark uh, Byers and, uh, and Barber and Leach, uh, you know, they, obviously they were best at it. I remember one player telling me and I, I can't remember who it was but it took a shot at Tony Esposito had the five hole fired it in there and the puck came out faster than it went in <laughs> yeah, and almost hit him in the head because yeah. it must have hit that that med he needed more in there. fish net he but, altered it later yeah <laughs> I'm playing in a men's true. league now and I found that the older you are the bigger equipment you need and Tony figured that out fairly <laughs> early on ago, yeah. well the Flyers and the Maple Leafs are uh, going at it at the gardens and after one period of play it's 3-1 in favor of Toronto you're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. The greatest film saga of all time and the greatest film music ever composed come together in a spectacular live event. Star Wars in concert. Featuring the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra, massive high def screens, original movie props, Relive the saga as never before. Awesome. November 26th at Air Canada Centre. Reserve seat tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotia Bank. Okay, ladies. Thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do Ice Girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh. You know what I'd like? A big salad. During the 2003 preseason, the Toronto Maple Leafs went to Sweden to tangle with three club teams, actually one in Helsinki, Finland. But it's not the first time the National Hockey League teams had ventured over to Scandinavia. While the purpose of the journey in mid-September was participation in a four-team tournament in Stockholm, the Capitals and North Stars found time to explore the city. Here, Swedish star Mats Ullander acts as tour guide for a couple of his visitors. <laughs> On the ice, both NHL teams dominated the action, winning all four games against AIK and Quebec, with Washington defeating Minnesota for the tournament championship. And as in North America, the presence of the NHL players attracted the attention of young autograph seekers. Willa Moore of the Capitals and North Stars trip to Stockholm later this season on the World Hockey Report. 
3-1 in favor of the Maple Leafs. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. In this game tonight, Toronto Maple Leafs jumping out to a 2-0 lead, and they still have that two-goal lead. The goals by Boschman, Hickey, and Salming. Barber has scored for Philadelphia. The shots, Toronto out shooting the Flyers, 13-10. There's Pat Quinn. And there's the faceoff to start the second period. Philadelphia trailing Toronto by two goals. Try to move it early now as they shoot it in across the leaf line. Coming back is Shan. Playing it on the boards, and Hill stopped it. He's forechecking. Hill into the corner. Boschman after him, and Boschman comes up with it. Then he overstates it. Hill getting it back. Gorenz moved it right back to him. Hill gets in front and is tied up. Here's Wilson after it. Wilson cleared it back to the net, and Duras for the Leafs. He was bumped on the boards by Al Hill. Philadelphia staying on top of Toronto. There's his shot that's blocked in front, and Saginaw starting Anderson. Up to Boschman. Boschman all alone on this play and across the line has to shoot it off into the corner. Mir out of the net. Anderson got it loose. Mir reached out, knocked at it again. Now Anderson still fighting for it against Wilson. And Bridgman shoots it back with his own net. And the Flyers, Al Hill, shooting it down inside the lead blue line. Salming, who has scored a goal for Toronto tonight, his first of the season, shoots it near the line, and it's blocked. A high shot off the glass. Philadelphia, Gorenz, went in after it. It comes in front prop. Didn't get the pass. And again, the Leafs cannot move it out. Bathes stopped it near the blue line. He's racing in against Sittler. Sittler is knocked down, and Bathes, he was bumped off the puck and fell to the ice. And now Saganok will try to clear it for Toronto, and he does. This time, whipping it all the way down the ice. It will be icing with Daly going back. Sittler, Martin, and Paymon up front for Toronto. Turnbull and Salming on the defense. Philadelphia with the draw. Holmgren going in back of the net. Prop shooting it in there. Holmgren holding it on the boards. It comes loose. And the lead Salming starting away. In that familiar skating pose with Paymon shooting it in. Here's Martin trying to get away from Prop. Martin was bumped on the boards. Paymon went back of the net. He's in against Bathe. Bathe with a stick on it. Paymon knocked him down. And Kerr coming straight out from his own goal mouth. Sittler stopped it near the line, and he's knocked flying. Here's Holmgren working it in. His pass on the wing, the high shot deflected by Turnbull. We're getting a penalty. There's a holding penalty coming up. Well, is that Holmgren going off again? He's spending a lot of time in the penalty box tonight. You see the shot by Kerr Turnbull. Just laid the stick in front of it. There's the hold. Holmgren trying to get position in front of Siroff against Salming and hauled him down. So that's the third time Holmgren will go into the penalty box. Time 2.16. And you have Paul to watch time the Philadelphia Flyers when they're short-handed. I say that because last year, I think it was 15 goals that Millikan, our statistician, 
Can you tell me if that's correct? 15 goals. That's right. Uh, they scored one, while shorthanded last year. One thing that makes them effective is when they get possession of the puck, uh, they don't always ice it. They look for that man cutting in the middle when they come along the boards, either Clark or Leach. They're the most dangerous out there, those two. Solving. Starting away for Toronto. Heading the line to center. He'll shoot it in from there. Derlay goes speeding in from the right side and Hickey from the other way. Hickey gets it back near the line. There's Picard's shot. Knocked down in front. And Philadelphia will clear it to the line. Solving knocked it down. There's Hickey. Fading on the shot. It comes back to the line again. Five was bumped by Burns. Into the corner, Derlego. That's Picard. Leaks with the pressure on. Now the man advantage. Derlego. And his shot deflected, and Leach takes over. He's hooked from behind. Derlego gets it through the goal crease. And the Leafs, Pat Hickey, taking a look now, finding somebody open. It's Derlego. Derlego gets it back. Solving shot. And that's got the rebound and score. Solving got the shot. Hickey was on the spot. And well, it's came on. four to one. Toronto. Will Paymont, that's his fifth goal in three games. Let's give the Leafs some credit here. I mean, they outworked the Flyers. They just kept going wherever the puck was, outmuscled them for the puck, and came up with a big play. Continually moving that thing around. Now, that's the guy to watch is Salming. That's the guy they try to feed back in the point and let the shot go. Look at the action in front of the net, tying everybody up. And uh, Paymont has the empty net. And that's the second power play goal for the Leafs tonight. 3-12, the time of the goal. And it's a three-goal spread for Toronto Maple Leafs. Great work by the Leafs on that power play. Now McLeish is coming in. Gets it back in front of the net. But the Leafs pick it up. And it's Saganuk. He put it behind Boschman. Barber feeds it back. Inside his own blue line. Philadelphia starting away again. That's Busnick. And Wilson to center. Wilson got away from a check. Here's McLeish from center ice, dropping it back. Barber coming after it. And the Flyers cannot get organized. The Leafs checking very well now as Boschman comes away. Boschman cruising in. Beautiful shot. And Phil Beer had to be very steady to block that one. Good play by Boschman. Flyers shoot it back down. McLeish can't reach it. On that pass by Busnick. Busnick went in after it. Busnick in the corner. McLeish was crashed into the boards by Picard on the other side. It comes back near the line. The long shot is dribbled wide of the net. Another shot. That hit the side of the Leaf goal. And the Leafs try to relieve the pressure and shoot it down the ice. Carries just lifting the high one. And it's icing called against Toronto. Tonight's game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And over here we have our industrial size deep freeze which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade. Now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds, so you don't want to get caught in there. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Oh, no way. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay, moving on. Stanfield's Polytherm. Winter underwear for men. The greatest film saga of all time and the greatest film music ever composed come together in a spectacular live event. Star Wars in concert. Featuring the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra. Massive high-def screens. Original movie props. Relive the saga as never before. Awesome. November 26th at Air Canada Center. Reserve seat tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotia Bank. Well, there's the goal scorer, Pat Hickey. And you know the teams try to form a box. Now watch how the Flyers get running around, and they really don't have 
that box set up. There's the shot, and I had said Paymont had scored the goal, but there was Hickey coming in and just letting that little backhand go in the empty net. Bridgman shoots one from center ice. Back of the net, Sira. He left it there. Shan will try to move it out. He does, but nobody can reach it. Paymont coming in on Daly. Got there, but Daly recovered the puck and just left it in front of the net. Now it's cleared out across the line to center ice, and Bridgman couldn't reach that. He's after Duras, who gets it up to Martin. Martin coming back for Toronto. Coming in on the right side with Paymont. Martin is upended as he crossed the blue line, and Daly went after it. Now they rough it up along the boards, and Paymont is good at that. One of the tough wingers for Toronto Maple Leafs, Wolf Paymont, now having a few words with Al Hill. Campanello, the linesman, is in quickly. You, you know, Hill, Hill gave uh, Martin a pretty good working over. Watch him cross over the blue line, and, and Hill will drive him. He'll go down into the boards, and then that's when Paymont comes in there and says, hey, look it. You know, if you want to keep that stuff up, you're going to have to get involved with me. That's something that Paymont, he's, he won't back down from anybody, and a good member of this hockey club that they can rely on and do something like that. Just be accounted for. Now out there for the Leafs is the man I referred to a moment ago as scoring, Durlego. Of course, I was referring to his good start this year. They picked him up from Vancouver last year, you'll recall, with five. And he really didn't come through. But they hope this is the year for Durlego. He's a real speedster. Number 19. Salming comes back in his own zone, holds it along the boards. Holmgren after him. Holmgren gets it loose. Holmgren can't get his stick free now. It's Prop trying to jam it from the side. They begin pushing and shoving to the left of the goaltender, Sarah. And again, Vive is in there now. Face off to the left of Sarah. It's 4 1 Toronto, 14 21 left in the second period. Hickey, two goals tonight, a little anxious. Now they drop it in. There's a drive from the line. It's knocked down. Murray getting a good shot away. Sarah, you mentioned this earlier, Gary. He is now getting more accustomed to moving out and cutting the angle, which is so very important. Well, when you're on uh, doing that, you know, it, it just doesn't give a winger or, or a forward any angle to shoot at. The further you come out, it just cuts down the angle. And if he ever gets confidence at doing that, Bob, uh, you know, he can he can be dynamite in between the pipes. Of course, the European style is playing back deep. Right on the crease, almost inside the net. Another thing that gives a goaltender an opportunity. Here's a break. Hickey coming in, dropping it over for five. He scores! Five on a second effort. And I'll tell you, Hickey is having a great night. That was a beautiful play by Pat Hickey. And five just stayed with it. 5-1 Toronto. Well, the way Hickey was going down here, that's the old alley up play and break out. I thought Hickey probably should have shot it from where he was. He elected the pass, but there's concentration, just staying with the play. And uh, Murray had uh, five tied up probably as good as you can check a man, and he was still able to gain control of the puck off the skates onto the stick. Boy, that takes concentration. Again, uh, Phil Mir didn't play that very well, allowing that rebound to come right back to Vive. And... So the Leafs open up a four-goal lead against Philadelphia. There's Vive again. This time Derlego was with him, along with Hickey. They're offside at the line. Now, this is another line that just has been put together. Yes. Do you remember after the 8-3 uh, trouncing by the Rangers, the Leafs put uh, Vive, Dr Drulego, and Hickey together, and they've been scoring. That's what Joe Crozier is looking for, three lines that can score, and that'll take the pressure off of just having one line that's able to put the puck in the net. Shan. Long shot, didn't get by anybody at the blue line, as Joe is trying to put it through his five again. Another shot and a great save by Phil Beer. Barber around the net. Pass comes out behind Wilson. He has to back up with it. There's Wilson starting away with Busnick on his right, shooting a long one down the ice. Leach going in. He touches it, so no icing. Leach trying to center it. It's cleared away by Sarah from the side of the net. Park now has it. Pass one in front for Lego and five. Break it up. Picking catching up now on the left wing. There's five. Nice move at the blue line. 
Five cutting in, sharp angle, centering it. Here covering up, and that was close. There's going to be another penalty. Bobby Tart, I believe, he dropped Hickey in front of the net. Now, let's see what happens if a fight breaks out here. We have too many players around. Five and Buznik is it in an embrace in front of Phil Mir. And the rest just talking over in the corner. I tell you, Gary, Buznik and Five don't want to let go. The referee is right there. That's Dave Newell. Well, I know they're going to send those two off. And you know one thing you got to say about the Leafs. Uh, Flyers have always been a team of intimidation. They've always been tough hockey club, and the Leafs aren't backing down one little bit. They're throwing check for check, hit for hit. I believe it's been cut. Along the nose, Hickey showing a cut. This is Hockey Night in Canada from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Okay, ladies. Thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do ice girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh... You know what I'd like? A big salad. Goal TV Canada has the MLS Cup covered all weekend long. Tune in for a Gold TV Canada special with our MLS Cup preview show, premiering Friday, November 20th at 6 p.m., with replays on Saturday and Sunday. Then, Gold TV Canada will bring you the MLS Cup live from Questfield in Seattle, as Real Salt Lake kicks off against the Los Angeles Galaxy, Sunday, November 22nd at 8.30. Gold TV Canada, this is football. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. The Maple Leafs have a 5-1 lead midway through the second period as Pat Hickey has scored his second and Rick Vive has added his second goal of the season. And the Leafs have a comfortable advantage and uh, things are starting to heat up a little bit. And, and as I mentioned, Bob Clark doesn't have much of a conscience and, and now you've got a few more stitches. Well, I think I've had about three or four points there and that's, that's the old line. You know, I got the scars to prove it. So <laughs> I think there's three stitches that had to go in there. But, you know, Bobby Clark and I, we go back about five years with the Flyers and the whole bit. And, you know, that's, it's the right thing to do. When a guy is hot, I mean, somehow you've got to step in his way. But, you know, he got the stick up a little bit high, and uh, I don't think he meant to cut me. But, uh, you know, we never do. Sometimes you give it, and sometimes you take it. And that night, it was, uh, my, I was on the receiving end. So. And, well, he didn't mean to break Harlemov's ankle either. Yeah, I know. He said he was sorry. So, <laughs> you know, that makes that it all better. Makes it all better. <laughs> Thank you very much. And yeah. off you go. Yuri Sir is playing exceptionally well and, and your point was well made earlier on that uh, this guy comes over from uh, Czechoslovakia at the time um, with a different method of playing goal and uh, when when you first uh, arrived and he's playing goal in practice what were your thoughts um, again I just came from John Davidson who stood there and just let the dumb forwards hit him you know <laughs> that playing your angles and here's and here's a guy that was uh, he was jumping all over the place and actually staying in his crease and I actually teach kids that this now maybe from this experience is that not that you're in the in right your butt in the net but if as long as your skates are on the um, on the uh, the goal crease line there uh, you can give that space, but you can make the save. So if you have that agility, and he was definitely a Les Binkley type of guy. Les Binkley would always give you the spot in the net where you wanted to shoot. Then he knew where you were shooting. And I think the Europeans and, and Yuri was like that. He knew what he was doing, but he was quick enough to make the save. I think a couple of times tonight in this game, you know, he made some glove saves with that glove almost went into the crowd. Um, but he had, uh, there was another fellow, I think it was Slava Duras was on the team, and, and there was a lot of Europeans coming over, and these guys could really play hockey, and I, and I just had the attitude that uh, they could teach me something, because that's in life, I think, uh, if I learn something every day, then uh, I'm a better person for it. And these guys played a different game, so we needed to spend time, and, uh, and I think even, uh, you know, from Borea Salming, who, who basically, he paid his dues years before, um, I don't think we gave enough attention at that time 
to what those guys knew and what they could teach us. They mm -hmm. came here to learn from us, but they had more that they could have taught us. And, and Yuri was one of those fellows that I think he fell into, uh, fell into a trap there here in Toronto and, uh, and, and, and never got out of it. What was he like in the dressing room? Uh, was there a language, a real language barrier, or uh, did they they pick it up quickly? No, not with George. You know, he was uh, he was actually an instigator. And besides Dave Farish and Ian Turnbull, he had to be the wittiest guy that that I've ever played with. Uh, and and probably I always call say goalies are goalies. They're, they're not hockey players. And but you know, Yuri was one of the guys that he always wanted to be with the guys. He wanted to be one of the guys, and uh, I think he really tried hard. But I, I just don't, don't think the personality was there that year. All right. Well, the Maple Leafs have a 5-1 to one lead over the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's go back upstairs now to Bob Cole. High sticking. This is not over yet. Clark got the major for high sticking. You saw the cut on Hickey as he made his way to the Maple Leaf bench. Clark is vehement with the referee, Dave Newell, but he drew five minutes for high sticking. We'll see if we can see it, Gary. So pick it out. Uh, happened right in front. No. no it was out of the play. Into the picture. We uh, really couldn't see it there, but you saw Hickey going down, grabbing his mouth. Now we see all kinds of sticks and gloves in front of Phil Meir. And remember that rule that we were talking about. If you drop your stick or glove, there are penalties involved. Mr. Ballard seems to be very happy about the way things are going tonight. Good mood tonight. He predicted that. I talked to him earlier this evening. He said, tonight we'll show our new look. I didn't quite ask him nor get a reply what the new look really is, but it's five to one against Philadelphia on the clock there now with 13.08 left of the second period, and I'd say that's new. The referees had a huddle in that penalty area, and they were talking over the whole situation, trying to get the penalty straightened out. Mentioned Clark already has five. Philadelphia penalty. 28, Mike Busney. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct and a 10-minute misconduct. Toronto penalty for number 22, Rick Five. Two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct and a 10-minute misconduct. Well, the 10-minute misconduct penalties, Gary, could be for, in fact, dropping the stick and or glove. The Leafs are playing good disciplined hockey, and they're showing quite a bit of force up front. Staying with it. Remember the last time the Flyers were on that penalty situation, they ran all over the place. They didn't have that box. Now they're two men short. Leafs won. Whipped along the boards by Daly and down the ice. Duras on the defense with Salming. I tell you, we're not finished yet. We're getting more penalties. Now Daryl Sittler and Bridgman had something going behind the play, and I believe Sittler of Toronto was getting the game. You'll see Sittler come to the bench now. There he is. The penalty bench area. And Newell, the referee, heading out the official call. Well, it's an interference it's call against Sittler. Look at Mr. <laughs> Joe Crozier. Oh, he's up on the... Up on the bench. Sittler, two minutes for interference. Time, 7.02. It happened near center ice, actually. When the puck was cleared into the leave zone. Now let's have a well, look. Well, it started right there. Oh. By the time they got to center, Daly whipped it around the boards after that. It went all the way down inside the leaf line, and then near center ice, Sittler upended the Philadelphia player. This is an exciting time, three on three. The, the Flyers, McLeish and Barber, two forwards out in this situation. A lot of skating room. Toronto leading, five to one. Duras coming out, Paymon, pass on escape, can't handle it. So Philadelphia now get a chance, and a great chance for Daly, going right in! Hit the side of the net with a shot as he tried to pick the short side, and Sirah coming right out at him. Salming, backtracking. Duras takes his pass, back for Salming. Paymon is on this wing. Salming gets away from one, one to beat, shoots! Salming has it again in the corner. Salming falls, and a two-man break for Philadelphia. Starting in is McLeish, Barber trailing. Here's Barber, and a great play by Sarah. Oh, what action we have now. Sarah making the save and then tipping it away. Daly near the line. Flipped the shot through for Barber. He tried to set it up for McLeish, 
And it's not down the ice. Smear will leave the net for this one. Eight, ten feet or so, and he clears it up to Daly. Daly's pass for McLeish. He's tired, has to go off. Shan is turning around, but McLeish remains on. He started to go over there. Now he's trying to catch Shan. He can't do it. Shan! And the hard drive is wide. Back for Prop. Prop the pass. Wilson stick handling through, up over the line. Waits for someone. Holmgren is on with him now. It's still Wilson. Nearly lost it to Duras. Wilson stays with it. Took a shot. It's knifed away by Sarah. Wilson again. Gets it back to the line. There's a drive by Prop. Knocked down by Sierra. And the lead, Shan. Long pass, a little too far for Boschman. Sittler will be on in five seconds. It's been great action as they get a whistle in the Philadelphia zone to the right of Phil Mir. And only one second left in the Sittler penalty. Well, again, they're having a little misunderstanding, but that's the most exciting time here is when the Teams play three aside. Now you can't get a better setup on a two-on-one right here. McLeish magic with that stick to Barber. Sierra again comes out to cut down that angle. But just before that, remember the, the play McLeish made set in Bob Daly. He shot just wide of the net. That would have been a perfect time for Bob Daly to cut into the middle of the ice. Would have given him a better angle to shoot at. He had lots of time and lots of room, but he tried to pick the short side and I'm it's impressed with Salming tonight, the way he's skating and setting up plays. Looks like Salming again, no question. Sittler is back on now. That pass goes down the ice inside the leaf line. Sierra back to the net to stop it. During the halfway mark of the hockey game now, Toronto leading 5-1. to one. A pass to the middle. Sittler couldn't reach it. Shot right on the net. Sierra stopping it for Salming. I'm Bob Cole with Gary Dornhofer at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto where the Leafs are up by four goals. And they shoot it into the corner to the left of Phil Beer. Icing called. Sittler questions it. It's icing called against Toronto. Well, it was lobbed in. Uh, yeah, high stick. Had to be. Other side of the center ice. And so far tonight, we've had 65 minutes in penalty. It's been a busy spot. Two minutes and 18 seconds left to go in the Leafs power play. That's Clark and Bosniak. The penalty bench area. As you look at Pat Quinn there behind the Philadelphia bench. And a good night for Pat Quinn. Well, Philadelphia Gorens tries Sarah from that angle. No problem. 5-1 Toronto. Daly stopped the play near center ice. Lawrence couldn't get through. Bridgman couldn't stop his man. Back come the Leafs again. Cutting for the net is Maloney. He tipped it just wide. Maloney back at the net, scooped it out along the boards. And Gorenz hooks it down the ice. Philadelphia shorthanded. A minute and 45 seconds left of that minor penalty. Now Paymon has to stop to hold this pass. Gets it back the other way for Turnbull in with Sittler. Sittler cuts in for the shot. And that's tipped away by Mir. Would have missed the net anyway, I think. And then was cleared down the ice. Salming is back. A minute and 25 seconds left of the Philadelphia penalty. Toronto five. Philadelphia one. Here come the Leafs. Turnbull faking his man. Pass to the head for Anderson too far. Anderson went in after it. They get it loose in there. Comes back right in front. Shannon had it tipped away before he could knock it down. Anderson again with Boschman and Saganok racing for the net. There's the shot. It's deflected. Saganok was covered in front. And the Flyers just move it to the line and down the ice. Al Hill tipping it. Barnes cleared it first. 50 seconds left in the Philadelphia penalty. And the Leafs back to regroup on this power play rush. A weak pass. Got as far as the line as a good play for Boschman. He's cutting in, dropping it for Shan. Beautifully. He fanned on it. He, he was looking up. It was set up beautifully, actually. And then he took a look at the net, and that's embarrassing. With the score, Toronto 5, Philadelphia 1. This is Hockey Night in Canada.
industrial size deep freeze, which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade. Now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds, so you don't want to get caught in there. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Oh, no way. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay, moving on. Stanfield's Polytherm. Winter underwear for men. The greatest film saga of all time and the greatest film music ever composed come together in a spectacular live event. Star Wars in concert, featuring the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra, massive high def screens, original movie props. Relive the saga as never before. Awesome. November 26th at Air Canada Center. Reserve seat tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. The Leaf Bench, a rather happy place tonight. This time, a week ago, it was dismal against the Rangers. What a start. Well, everybody was nervous, you could tell that, but tonight they're playing with a lot of confidence. And I just watch the Leafs in their own zone, how quickly they're moving the puck. They're not letting the fly Flyers tie them up in their own zone. Leafs nearly coughed it up right there. Barber leads it back inside his own line. Saginaw couldn't stop that one. It was cleared down the ice by Bathe. And back of the net, Farish. The Philadelphia penalty, five seconds left. Last chance for Saginaw. Saginaw going in on a bad angle, can't shoot it. He'll whip it around the net. In front it comes, and Anderson couldn't poke it in. Anderson gets set again. Here's Farish's shot, a rising shot. Another penalty coming up against Philadelphia. Bathe with a stick going high in front of the net. So they finish one penalty, and now they're going to get another. Cross-checking. Cross-checking penalty going to Daly of Philadelphia. Now Laurie Boschman was positioning himself in the front of the net, and Daly gave him a good cross-check and put him right down. I still Boschman. didn't see it. I thought it was well, Bay who just, was going to go. No, it happened just prior to that. And, and you know, Boschman only, they've got him listed as 185 pounds in the program. I, he doesn't look like he weighs that much, but to get himself in front, got to give the kid a lot of credit. Especially when you have to take on a guy like Daly. Oh. Ari Boschman had a great talk with him a little while ago. Great young man. Turnbull shot put on. That's stopped by Amir. Turnbull, try it again. Right on, and Amir stopped it again. It's loose. It's scored. Amir could not hang on to it. There was no whistle. The puck came loose, and it's now 6-1 to one, Toronto. Anderson will get it, I believe. It was Anderson who was in behind. Oh, look at this shot by Turnbull. I mean, he lets this thing go now. There's no screen, and look, Phil Mir figures he's got it. Where is it? There it goes, right in the net. He had the glove over the pad. Not figure it was stuck in between. And John, Anderson. John Anderson. Assist is number two, Ian Turnbull. Gave the Flyers their... And number 12, Laurie Bosch. Oh, the Maple Leafs, their sixth goal. 12, this is turning 12. into a rout. John Anderson. 12-12, the time of the goal Washington. by Anderson. Time he got it behind Mir on that good shot by Turnbull. He had two in a row. It was the second shot that Mir could not hang on to. And it's now 6-1. to one. Toronto, Gerlego. Put one up to the line. Wilson feeds it ahead for Prop. He can't get loose as he was stopped by Juris near the leaf blue line. Now Prop again stopped by Juris. Juris feeds it down the ice. Once again, Prop got his hand up. But the Leafs continue on. Martin tried to set it up for Derlego. But Prop comes right back. Prop going in. Gets it back again. Hit a skate. He didn't see it. And the Leafs will bring it out. Juris looking confident as he moved it across his own line to Hickey. Hickey cutting in the backhand shot. And that was wide of the short side. Hickey again is back of the net. Good play in front. And Derlego didn't get good wood on that shot. It just went off the blade of his stick and wide. Back for Philadelphia's Wilson. One man to beat. Going in on Shan. He got by him, but it was cleared away by Sarah. Now Sarah again took one away for Martin. And he bumped it out across the line to center ice. Prop brings it back in. Prop for Philadelphia. Trying the shot from that bad angle. 
It was deflected and it goes off the glass down into the Philadelphia zone. Toronto six, Philadelphia one. The team's changing as the play goes on. This is Bridgman going in. Bridgman against Duras. And Duras takes him in on the boards. Bridgman gets it loose for McLeish. McLeish left it there. Morrison got it back in front. McLeish gets in front of the net. McLeish again. And his shot spoiled this time. With Solomon trying to clear it. Daly took a shot. That went off the leg. Duras again playing well behind that blue line. Shooting it down the ice for Toronto. They have six minutes left in the second period with icing called against the Maple Leafs. Live from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, this is Hockey Night in Canada. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotia Bank. Okay, ladies. Thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do Ice Girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh. You know what I'd like? A big salad. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports. Your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Five minutes, 58 seconds left of the period. Toronto up by five goals. Bobby Clark couldn't get the draw this time. The Leafs saw me. Played it up on the left side. Went by everybody to center ice. Leafs trying to get it going again. That's Maloney trying to move it. Got it up as far as the Philadelphia line. Clark whipped it back for Daly to Clark. Clark stopped at center by Salming. He fell. Managed to pass it ahead. Sittler couldn't reach it. Clark was bumped. It comes to Paymon. Cutting in for Toronto. Paymon gets set. Doesn't shoot it. Played it across the goal crease. Here's Turnbull's shot. A low wicked shot was wide of the net. It's all the way back for Borea Salming. 5.15 left of the period. The Leafs regrouping again and doing a good job for Paymon. Paymon trying to go in. Sittler has it centered it. And Martin's weak backhander was stopped by Amir. Here's Reggie Leach breaking out with Barber and Daly. Oh, look out was he hit by Picard. Oh, got to see that one again. Paymon coming right back for Toronto. Sittler behind him. Paymon shot. That was deflected by Wilson. Into the corner is Barber. Barber is bumped. He's very physical now at this point. Anderson! And that shot just wide. Sittler keeping it in. Back to the line. Very screen shot for Sittler again. Sittler a pass. A dandy for Anderson. Off on the wing for Picard. High shot off the glass, and the Leafs are all over Philadelphia now. Sittler went down. Farage kept it in. Great pressure by Toronto. Anderson. And a shot stopped by Mir. Scramble. And it's knocked away. Picard. And that shot is wide. You can't believe the pressure the Leafs had exerted on the Philadelphia Flyers. And the fans are responding with a great roar now. Wilson trying to move out. Can't do it. Oh, it just crossed the line. And Picard is to wait for everybody to come back on side. But they're pouring it out again. Here's Anderson. He tried to backhand the pass over. But it was called at the line. Great action here. Tonight's game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. 
and about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you, or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. since we've seen four checking like that by the Leafs. Oh. And they just kept coming. Now they have Philadelphia inside that line again. And the Flyers, unable to move it out on that last occasion this time, have to elect to shoot it down the ice. And then Duras gave it away. There's a quick shot. That was deflected by Sira. Comes near the line. Flyers keep it in. Prop tried to get loose. But the Leafs were all back covering up and second up comes out with Martin. Here's Martin. Too quickly and went by the puck. Long pass down on the right side. Duras is back for Toronto. Duras played it up on the wing. Philadelphia taking over. Holmgren dropping it back for Bay. Bay, the pass ahead, stopped by Saganak. Going in with Boschman. Boschman winding up and Mears stopped it and hangs onto it for a faceoff. The lead six, Philadelphia Flyers one. 2.58 left, Hickey with two goals tonight, wrapped at one. A weak shot went wide of the Philadelphia net and the Flyers trying to headman it ahead to Bridgman. It didn't work, that's icing called against Philadelphia. Well, I remember at the top of the show, we had Joe Crozier had said, the weakness of the Flyers is back on the blue line. And the Leafs are certainly taking advantage of that. But taking that a step further, Bob, you know, your defense is only as good as your offense. When your forwards are coming back and covering their wings, that allows your defense to stand up that blue line and challenge. So some of the blame has to be taken by the, the flyer forwards tonight. Your Lego with Hickey. Getting set to play it out to the line. Philadelphia stopped right there again. Hickey got in the way. Gavin is the other winger on that line. The 17 for Toronto. Gerlego overstates it. That's Gavin now. Running into the leash. Bath goes back in his own zone. Hickey watching him. Wilson, a pass up through the middle. Good play down on the wing. McLeish coming up on the play. It's into the corner as Morrison just flicked it in back of the net. And the Leafs are all back. And they pick up their men and clear it back out. We're going to get another penalty. Bays and Hickey had it going inside the leaf line. And Bays, for one, will be going off. I think that's the only one, Bob. That's just a case of frustration now. You know, the Flyers five goals behind. And uh, they haven't been able to generate much of an offense tonight. And it's just a, a bad penalty. Got the stick up. Just watch down the bottom of the screen. There it is, the high stick elbowing, roughing, you gotta call anything. 1746. So 214. There you see it left of the period. And Toronto leading by five. It's Toronto six. Philadelphia one. There's Joe Crozier. Has to be quite contented with the way things have turned out so far in this hockey game. Wanted to cut down goals against. He's allowed one so far tonight. He and his Toronto Maple Leafs, they've scored six times. They have another power play. And that's Daly. Back of the net. Eluding a check. Throwing it up on the right side. And Clark waited for the pass and did not come. Hickey has it for Paymont. Closing in. Hit the side of the net. Paymont again for Hickey. And his quick shot didn't quite get it away properly. And it dribbled wide. Then Philadelphia, Leach shooting it down the ice. 130, left of the penalty, and a minute and 45 in the period. Toronto up by five goals. Back to organize the five Maple Leafs. Salmi hanging on to it, and it's played up to center ice. Anderson from Turnbull shooting it in. Leach coming back in front of the net. Bad pass, 
and hitting the goal post was Turnbull. It comes back to Clark, and he'll just shoot it down the ice. That's something that uh, just doesn't happen with the Flyers. Very careless. Thrown that thing blind by Leach there, intercepted. Here's Paymont coming out again in with Boschman. Boschman cuts through the middle. Lost control of it. And it's clear. Murray trying to move it out, but not quite succeeding. Finally, Wilson shoots it down the ice. A minute left in the period, 44 seconds left. And the Bays penalty, 6-1 to one, Toronto. Solving just cruised back of the net. Picard played it up easily on the boards for Saganuk to Boschman. Anderson going in. Takes his time. Anderson stopped for Boschman. Saganuk right in front. It comes to Picard and tipped away from him in time. Now back out for Bridgman. Bridgman in with Barber. Look out for Bridgman. Backhand. And Dora Serra went down and held on to it. I'll tell you, I don't think he knew quite where that shot was going to end up. You know that the center of the net there, there's a mesh part. I think that kept him from sliding right in the net. There's a two-on-one. Bridgman stays on his backhand and lets it go. They've got a fight at center ice here now as you look at Sarah making that save. And they're letting them go. That's Buznik and five. And the players standing outside that big circle. This is what they're going to do, this new rule, if they want to fight. Let them get their frustrations out, and they can't do much fighting with the hanging on to the sweaters. All that does, Bob, is really tire you. Are you I getting mean, tired after, 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 after you a getting tired? tussle like that? I mean, you are just whipped for the rest oh. of the game. Well, they're breaking it up, though. Let's let's look at this uh, trio of Vibe, Hickey, and Durlego. In only four and two-third games, they have picked up 15 points, seven goals and eight assists, and that's something that Crozier was talking about getting another unit that can score. He may have found it in that trio. You know, Gary, you make a, a great point when you talk about two players besides a Buznik and Vibe hanging on to each other's sweaters and pulling on these arms for, I suppose, they were there for 40, 50 seconds. That's right. <laughs> They've got to be worn out for a while now. Oh, they're, they're, they're fatigued. There's no, no question about that. That's my favorite saying, and I'm trying to get away from that. No question about it. I mention that all the time. But anyway... Well, there is no question. <laughs> You're tired, believe me. No question about it. Time, 1932. 1932, the time of the major penalties. Buznik and Five, and they're both gone to their dressing rooms. So only 28 seconds left of the period, and Toronto with a commanding lead of five. Six to one. I'll tell you, Pat Quinn was saying before the game tonight, as I mentioned earlier, it's too early to push any panic buttons, but I'll tell you, this is the second win now, and I'm calling it a win now, why not, for the Leafs over Philadelphia this year. This time last year, he was riding very, very high. You light up the cigar now like uh, Arbuck of the Celtics used to do? You know, once <laughs> the game is won, or felt the game was won? Are you I saying that right now? I, I, well, 6-1, to one, the way this Leaf team is playing? Excellent. They are improving with each game. No way. They can be taken this evening. Anderson going in on Daly. And Daly flipped it to center ice. 15 seconds left in the period. Salming just backs up a little bit. Kills a few seconds. Gives it to Anderson. They're in complete control. Out to Boschman. He had it knocked away by Daly. Six seconds left. There's Salming. He'll kill the clock to Anderson. It's loose at center ice. The bell goes to end the second period. And another fight. Breaking out and Holmgren is into it again. And now this is a dangerous part of any fight when the players are coming on the ice, and I don't know what they're going to do about this. Everybody is out there now. Well, now let's see. If you give everybody a misconduct, who's going to finish off the game here? Well, I'll tell you, Dave Newell has his hands full right now. Well, there was no reason to do what Holmgren did there. Uh, the period was over. He just took the high stick to Boschman. He's going to get the penalty. We'll see it now as we wind down to the bell. All right, the uh, the bell had just gone, and there he comes with the elbow or the stick. And the bell I, is now gone. You're right, I, I just think it's a case of the Flyers. They are really being embarrassed here. The Leafs are, are winning in every department. They're outworking them. They're working in the corners better than they are, and they are definitely passing the puck better. 
and indicative of the play 15 to 9 the Leafs outshot Philadelphia in that second period and so the score at the end of the second is Toronto six and uh, Philadelphia one there's our vantage point where all the sports writers sit and over here we have our industrial size deep freeze which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds so you don't want to get caught in there yeah sounds like it yeah all right oh no way well you gotta do what you gotta do yeah oh, i know okay moving on stanfield's polytherm winter underwear for men the greatest film saga of all time and the greatest film music ever composed come together in a spectacular live event Star Wars in concert featuring the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra massive high def screens original movie props relive the saga as never before awesome. November 26th at Air Canada Center reserve seat tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster John Anderson is added to the lead. The Leafs with a 6-1 to one advantage over the Philadelphia Flyers after two periods of play. And Dave Hodge is standing by with a special intermission feature with Dan Maloney. Now what a difference a week makes. Exactly uh, one week ago tonight, Dan Maloney was not in uniform and uh, might have been wondering when he would get into uniform. All of a sudden, things have changed around, and I know you're very happy about it. But tell us what went through your mind during training camp when your future as a Leaf was uncertain. Well, it was a situation that uh, I wasn't totally unprepared for. Like last year, near the end of the season, I didn't play very much. And when I got a chance, my, uh, I broke my thumb. So I came to camp this year to open mind and in a really good condition. And things didn't look too good during camp. I didn't play, many, didn't play any games at home. And I played a few on the road. And I uh, wasn't practicing with the team. And then as things worked out, uh, the, things kind of worked out for the best. And I just kept working hard. And uh, as a result, we had a tough home opener. And I got into the lineup. And we've been doing fairly well ever since. Your value in the dressing room is often mentioned, uh, your toughness. How do you see your role on this team? Well, the best way I can, I can help the hockey team is just by hustling and working hard and playing it tough, you know? Well, that's sort of what uh, tonight's game is all about. But the Leafs are obviously doing a lot more of what Joe Crozier has wanted them to do at home, a lot of what they did in, in Philadelphia. This is the way you want to play, right? Well, we have a tendency when we come home, we want to really play well and, and be fancy and uh, make all the perfect plays, the long passes, and deep two or three guys. But... You know, maybe one game out of 80, you get a chance to play like that. When you come home, you got to play very, very hard. And teams that come into Toronto seem to always play better than they do anywhere else because they're on television and the mom and dad are watching or, the, you know, the game's right across the country. So they play extra hard. So Joe's got us now. We, we come home here to play. you got to play the game by inches. Check hard, and when you get your chances, put them in. There was a time when uh, Philadelphia had the least number. It doesn't seem to be that way anymore. Is there a specific reason for it? Well, I, I really think there's a, there's a good nucleus of hockey players here. We have a, a lot of young talent. The team is very quick. We have a quick hockey team, and we're getting to the point now we're getting confidence in one another, and we're not backing down from anyone. It's, it's the confidence you have to have in order to give yourself room to play better. When you, if you're backing away, or like in this in, in instance tonight, if we backed away from Philadelphia, the score might be the other way. We're standing up to them, and they're giving us the room, and we're scoring the goals. It's, it's uh, almost like a team coming of age, you know, and I think the future looks really good for us. Can you play them differently because Lindsman is not there? Bobby Clark said to me the other night that without Lindsman, they're more like they were four or five years ago, the more plodding type of team, and they, re and they rely a lot more on muscle than perhaps they did last year. Does it change your approach, knowing that his speed is not in there? Well, I don't know if one guy can make that much difference. Like, Kenny Lindsman's a good hockey player, and he's really a quick hockey player. He makes things happen, to happen out there. He, his speed generates a lot of offense for them. But we have a lot of speed in our hockey team, too, and uh, we got a few guys who can skate as fast or faster than him. And Granted, I think you'd have to pay attention to Linsman if he was on the ice, but uh, as it stands right now, he's not there, so we're just taking advantage of it. That's what it's all about. Dan, your fans are happy that uh, you are here in uniform, and the Leafs are unbeaten with Dan Maloney in the lineup, right? Oh, thank you. Dan. It looks like it's going to keep uh, going that way tonight. Dan Maloney and uh, an integral part of the Leaf team as far as character and, and physical play. But here's another guy that uh, uh, comes to Toronto in a big trade uh, and immediately has the uh, spotlight and, in some instances, the bullseye attached to his jersey. Yeah, well, that's for sure because I had, uh, he was one of my targets too. He's, 
I think in my rookie year with the Rangers, he was playing with Detroit, and it's the hardest I've ever been hit behind the net. I was winding around the net, but he had me in his sights. So uh, I was still looking for a chance to get him back at some point. And I wasn't going to drop my gloves with him because he had a pretty good reputation there. But uh, to be on the same team with Dan, and I think a perfect example of what was going on at the time is, is Dan was closer to the end of his career than the beginning. And he, was, uh, he partook in the, the coaches' meetings and, and, and with Daryl and like, the conversations like what, like, what are we going to be when we grow up if we're a team? And he went on to have a pretty good coaching career uh, like a couple of years later when yeah. he retired. Now, with Imlac running the team, uh, there's not an awful lot of uh, byplay between he and what the dressing room was. And, and before that, with Jim Gregory and Roger Nielsen, and when the Leafs uh, uh, had those great teams in the 70s, there was quite a bit of a communication uh, uh, situation there. But, but there was really none with Punch. I mean, he ran it the way he ran the team back in the 60s, and you either did it my way or the yeah. highway. Yeah. And that was the same kind of thing. I think the, uh, the liaison there was uh, you know, one of the most beautiful guys is Dickie Duff. He was around all the time. And, uh, and I think he kept, kept a lid on things. But uh, I think you're right. It's like I said the other day, lead, follow, or get out of the way. And I don't know if we really had at the coaching level, like the leader. Uh, it was always felt that Punch was running it up there. This was the 80s, and we just went through the 70s, and uh, we wanted to talk to someone. So what I did when I got here, I finally figured out that Harold Ballard went for a skate every morning at 7 a.m. And about 7.30, he was on the training table. So I would come into a 10.30 practice at about 7.30 just to say hello to Harold. And he treated, uh, he, he treated me really good. But Harold was nuts, and he's the one that, that told me, he says, I don't care what they say about me as long as we're on the front page. Heck, he so do something to get on the front page, right? And uh, but we had some pretty good conversations then. And, uh, you know, he loved the team, and he loved the sport, and, uh, and uh, he was his own individual. But I think a lot of that was going on at the time. We were just trying to, trying to look for, like, who's going to lead this team and what do we want to be when we grow up, and we never really found it. All right. Well, the Leafs have a pretty comfortable lead here as they have a 6-1 to one advantage over the Philadelphia Flyers after two periods of play. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotia Bank. Okay, ladies. Thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do Ice Girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh. You know what I'd like? A big salad. One of the intermission features during the 1980-81 season and uh, others uh, was pro tips. And of course, who better to have you uh, learn the game from than Howie Meekin? This is something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. We brought together seven of the greatest hockey players in the National Hockey League to show you what they do and how they got to do it. Okay. Let's play back. Here's Johnny. Our stars, a valuable member of the Winnipeg Jets, courtesy of the U.S. Olympic team, Dave Christian. The young and talented center man from the Toronto Maple Leafs, Lori Boschman. And this big fellow, Larry Robinson, kept the crew loose for three days. As the smile on the face of premier Buffalo goalie, Don Edwards will confirm. The recently appointed captain of the Vancouver Canucks, Kevin McCarthy. Minnesota North Star centerman Bobby Smith was a natural for this series. And on the top shelf, trying to get dressed the hard way, Montreal Canadian star Guy Lafleur, the finest hockey player in the world. Lori Boschman will show you puck control, how to roll a wrist, and how to pass the puck in the air. What a fine young hockey player. 
Gaylord Floor. My, he'll demonstrate skating and shooting, and does he have some scoring magic for you? Dave Christian beats Larry Robinson with a nifty bit of footwork. Watch this. And scores a goal on a great shot. Bobby Smith gets Don Edwards moving one way. Oops, wrong way. Now that's puck control. Norris Trophy winner Larry Robinson and Kevin McCarthy, captain of the Vancouver Canucks, will show you some of the drills they use to improve their lateral movement. If you don't think that's tough, just ask Bobby Smith. What I'll show you in pro tips is how to play defense and how to develop power in your skating. Dewey crossovers, backwards and sideways while carrying the puck sure improves your mobility, your stamina, and your power. Also, it isn't bad for the conditioning. This is a great drill. I'll show you goaltending, balance, and how to play the angle. The first thing I'm trying to do here is just stay on my feet and get as low as possible from my vision. Uh, Bobby's moving in on me here, and I'm just trying to keep him balanced so with moving him. This is only my fourth year as a center iceman, and I've had to learn a lot about winning faceoffs. On pro tips, I'll show you what I've learned. Bobby Smith will win the draw by anticipating when the referee will drop the puck. Now we'll show you. Watch, he moves early, takes Laurie's stick out of the way, and on the backswing, passes the puck to a teammate. I'm here to show you some tips on skating. Speed and acceleration is the name of the game, and goals like this are just beautiful. And he knows it. And don't think Larry Robinson doesn't appreciate it. Hi, I'm going to show you some inside tips on how to play defense. Another thing that you have to do sometimes when the guy backs into the crease like he's doing now and getting into the goal his way, the best thing to do is just give him one little shot and then back, look back to where the puck is because you don't want to take your eye off the puck or the man at the same time. The, the important thing is, though, is you can't get tied up with the guy. When you get tied up with him too long, the referee notices, and then that's when he calls the penalty. There's a big difference between junior hockey and professional hockey, and one of them is puck handling. And I'm here to show you a few of the tricks. You don't make the big leagues without first doing your homework. Carrying the puck on the circle, forwards and backwards, improves your skating and puck handling. Stopping and starting and going around pylons at full speed with the puck eventually enables you to make plays like this one. Laurie takes a return pass from Gee and is head-to-head -head with Kevin McCarthy. He goes to his right into his backhand, and Kevin goes with him. Opens up the left wing. Now, watch puck control at its best. Laurie evades the stick check and then flips the puck in the air between Kevin's legs right to the open Dave Christian. I had to improve my shot a lot going from amateur hockey to the NHL. I'm here to show you a few of the things I worked on. Dave Betty can hit the short side post three out of three. Edwards there took it away from him, so he hits the far post. That's shooting. Al, what's the most important skill needed by a defenseman? Outside of skating, I'd say he's anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of <the> skating. <laughs> Pro tips, Howie Meeker. Uh, video, watching yourself play, uh, watching to learn. And uh, Pat Hickey, you sat down, and a lot of players that we get in this chair, we asked them uh, what they thought of how they were playing and how the game looked and how the television looked and how the coverage looked. And it is different, isn't it? I was fortunate in Hamilton, CACH TV always did it. So in my junior uh, year, um, we went over to the station and watched the replay. And the coach could actually say, see, Hickey, you thought you were forechecking, but you were floating in there. <laughs> and, I, and it helped me pick up the game. And my father, Jerry, always, uh, he went to St. Mike's. Uh, Back in the 40s, and he always said, you guys have got all the tools here. Look how you can learn the game and watch a face-off and watch a replay and things like that. So utilize that education. But the funny thing in the pro tips I'm watching, and uh, you, you, you don't really know how well conditioned these players are. Now, this is taped in the summertime, I would imagine. And Larry Robinson did a couple of crossovers and everything, which you need to do. And then he fell down with spaghetti legs. And kids, that's, that's how conditioned these guys are in the, in the, in the uh, wintertime. So you need to do something in the, in the summertime. 
But I watched this game even after I, uh, you know, before I scored a goal, or I had two, and, um, and I'm looking at Vive and Gerlego, and they're, they, I know I'm faster than they are, but they're ahead of me, and I'm saying, geez, you're floating out there. So <laughs> I'd like to go back. Maybe I could get the hat trick. Tonight, yeah, that's you know? right. You could go back and maybe try it again. Yeah. The, uh, having family and friends watch, I know uh, 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 people have sat and said, well, my kids are sitting there going, Dad. You're floating. Dad, you're missing your check. Dad, you're doing this. But a lot of times it's, it's watching the show and all of a sudden television commercial comes on and of course it's a different era. Yeah, that's, that's, that's for sure. The one thing that I, that I did look though is this, I was analyzing myself, is like why did I make that decision and where did I go? And if you notice the one goal I scored tonight, like I was behind the goaltender. And, uh, but that was the quickness and the, sort of the European rotation. I mean, I was pretending I was playing with Hedberg and Nielsen and, and that really was... Uh, it's spontaneous, and I, and I think I developed a little bit of that style was if I don't know what I'm going to do next, you, within the structure of the whole system, uh, how is the guy going to defend against me? And I think that's the way I scored that one little empty netter is because I was just following the play, but I was moving at 30 miles an hour, and at 30 miles an hour you can react almost on anything defensively or offensively. So the name of the game is is skating, but that's what I'd like to sit my sons down and my daughter and explain, <laughs> and c because I actually could tell them, this is what I was thinking there. It might look like you're out of position, but uh, Freddie Shiro said that to me the night that I scored two goals against the Rangers when I got traded to Co Colorado. The one quote in the paper the next day was like, on both Hickey's goals, he was out of position. So I kind of take a little bit of pride of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way it looks. Two goals and he was out of position on one, but was thinking all the time, which is important. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports. Your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Centre, Gate 1. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. Now that's coming prepared. Look at that. You know, one thing to, to mention here. Remember the Flyers? They gave up Bob Kelly, Andre Dupont, and John Paddock. Three players that uh, could play in the National Hockey League, and they didn't get anybody in return. Perhaps... Why does a team, Gary, make a move like that? I don't know. I, you know, if you're going to trade somebody, I'd like to get somebody back that's equal or, or better, and the Flyers didn't. They're relying on their rookies, and uh, rookies were unable to make the club, except for Tim Kerr, and he's probably only here until Lindsman gets back in the lineup. Now, as we start this period, the Leaf offsides. They have the man advantage, and leading by five goals. It's been quite an effort by Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. I don't think, Gary, anyone would have guessed they'd command this game as they have. Philadelphia coming in here, looking for revenge against Toronto. There's Paymont into the corner with it. Off the boards, back to the line. Turnbull gets set, winds up, takes a good look. Lots of time for solving. He moves toward the middle. There's a shot from close in by Paymont. Stop the rebound. And Sittler missed by a good margin on the far side. Now Sittler gets back to break up a clearing play by Leach. Solving will go behind the net with it, giving it to Turnbull. He controls it with a skate and now gets some skating room. Here's Turnbull up to center and Paymont on the move. Clark after him. Paymont around the Philadelphia net, getting it back to Turnbull to Solving. Winding up for the shot. Turnbull will drive it. There it goes. And it's wide of the net. Solving from the other point. Flipped it in on the boards for Sittler. It'll go back to Solving likely. There it is to Solving and the drive. And it is picked just wide. Turnbull threw it off the boards through the crease. Solving a good move to keep it in. Into the corner, Sittler. Sittler taking a good look. Lots of time. Leach watching his every move. 
Sittler going to the side of the net and Leach stealing it from the lead captain. Now Daly flipped it ahead for Bobby Clark, killing some time near his own blue line and shooting it down the ice with 30 seconds left in the penalties. Peters in the nets now for Philadelphia as they make a change in this third period. Derlego going in, Derlego gets set, gets it back to the line, Picard winding up. Picard left it there for Derlego. On the other side, solving for Picard, the drive, and a foot or so wide of that far post. Solving again, getting set. Winds up for the shot, doesn't shoot it. Derlego, hit the goal post. That was solving. A pass in front of the backhand shot by Hickey. The penalized players step back on, and the Flyers get it to center ice. Picard. Stopped by Kerr. Kerr back in his own zone. Gets some room to center ice. Kerr tried to go through and he was belted at the blue line and not flying by Gavin. The Leafs, Derlego, got away from the check but couldn't move the puck. Now Hickey has it. Hickey's pass for Bill Derlego going in. He's across the line, away from Barnes. Got a piece of him eventually and it goes to the side of the Philadelphia net where Hickey steals it. Can't kick it in front as he tried with a stick jammed along the boards. Now Hickey and Gavin get a whistle in the Philadelphia zone. From Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Hockey Night in Canada. size deep freeze which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds so you don't want to get caught in there yeah sounds like it yeah all right oh no way well you gotta do what you gotta do yeah oh, i know okay moving on stanfield's polar therm winter underwear for men well, the Leafs have been dynamite on the power play. A pass from Salming to Gerlego right off the goal post. But Salming being in the middle of the nice had could either shoot or pass. He elected to pass and hit the post or a goal would have gone by Peters. Martin got the draw, but Peters cleared it into the corner. There's Daly in front of the netminder. And Philadelphia working it away is Frank Bay. He shoots it in wide of the lead goal. Sir out of the net. We're getting another penalty this time. Toronto Maple Leafs, and there's going to be another fight right in front of the net. That's Bathe and Shan. And the players are now being ordered to move away. They're trying to get arms loose to throw punches. And they're doing it here. Well, you notice how quickly the linesman came in there to break it up as soon as the players hit the ice. Boy, it's been that kind of a game tonight. The slightest little aggravation or agitation, and they get at it. There's a good shot of the the new rule being looked after. The players do move away. I, I think, though, they have a, Well, we're going to take a quick break and go to Montreal. More scoring there at the Forum. Action tonight in the NHL, but I must correct an earlier statement about Canadians winless. Get back to it. Oh. There's the first Vancouver goal, and Jerry Butler scores it, and there goes Bunny the Rock shutoff. A clean draw. Well, the importance of faceoffs, perfect, and Jerry Butler lets the slap shot go and beats the Rock cleanly. That's three to one now in the third period in Montreal. Jim Robson and Dick Irvin in Montreal at the Forum. And Bob Cole here at Maple Leaf Park. for fighting. Toronto penalty number three. Well, you're going to see the Shen. high stick there with Frank Babe and Shan. Five minutes for fighting. Time 3.03. Tonight's game Four is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens, Gardens in Toronto. The greatest film saga of all time and the greatest film music ever composed come together in a spectacular live event. 
Star Wars in concert. Featuring the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra, massive high-def screens, original movie props. Relive the saga as never before. Awesome. November 26th at Air Canada Centre. Reserve seat tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotia Bank. Bays and Shan are gone. Wires are on the power play. Shan got the extra two. And here it comes to Wilson, stepping in for the shot. Sarah cutting the angle a bit and hanging on to it. Well, Wilson perhaps could have waited a little longer there. Barber was trying to fight himself or fight his way in front of that net and get in front of Sirov, was unable to do so. That's what we mean by improvement on the Leafs, the way Picard kept Barber from reaching that slot area. Sirov being beaten only once tonight in this hockey game and now facing a power play opportunity for the Philadelphia Flyers. Clark against Paymont of this faceoff. Scampanello ordering the sticks down. It's tough to get them ready. They're ready. And the Leafs on it right away. Picard rifles it down the ice. That's Prop going back. Here's Barber winding up at his own blue line. The pass to Wilson. Wilson gets it over the line. Wilson on a sharp angle. Here's Prop getting set. He doesn't shoot it. Pass it into the side of the net for Wilson. Wilson being bothered by Duras. Wilson gets it back, but the Leafs intercepting, and it was Solving who cleared it down the ice. Something new the Leafs are doing now is sometimes they go with three and even four defensemen to kill off the penalty. Right now they have three with Solming playing up in front along with Paymont. Here's McLeish coming out. Leach, rather, to center ice. Leach gets up over the line, gets it in by Solming, back of the net. And the Leafs on it right away. Wilson kept it in, though. Wilson to the side of the goal with it. Out to the line for Kropp. He faked the shot for Barber. Right in front. And Dirk. down goes Sira again. And he hangs on to it. And right away, the Leafs are in to protect the goaltender. Sira will not be faked out of position. He stayed right there. Well, this time it's Duras and Clark that were going at it. That was right in front of the net. Well, there's the, the pass. Now watch, it'll be just a little pass out in front by Barber. Wilson was in there, deflected it. Not, didn't get very much on it, and Ciro actually had an easy time of it. But I like the way Duras was moving Clark out of that crease area. He just pushed him to the side of the net so Clark couldn't come in there for a rebound. That's one thing that uh, Coach Joe Crozier had said. Duras is not much of an offensive player, but boy, does he help me behind the blue line. Bad tempers here today. Philadelphia completely frustrated by the onrushing Toronto Maple Leafs. And it's 6-1 to one at this point. If every game took this long, Bob, they'd have to pay you time and a half. <laughs> We're getting set to the left of Sarah. 15-56, left in the third period. Here's Daly, with the pass over for McLeish. He waits, hangs on to it, waited too long maybe. It comes to the Leafs, Martin, and he backhands it off the boards down the ice. 44 seconds left of the Shan penalty. Philadelphia on a power play. You'd never know it though, the Leafs are checking them well. Here's Daly coming through center. His pass near the line. It's cleared across in front of the Maple Leaf goal into the corner, Bridgman. Bridgman is bumped right away by Solving, throwing his weight around. Philadelphia in control inside the line. Hill was knocked off his feet by Martin. And wait a minute. Martin might get a penalty here for boarding, I think. He threw the check into the Philadelphia player, and yes, it'll be boarding. This is Hockey Night in Canada from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Okay, 
ladies! Thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do Ice Girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh... You know what I'd like? A big salad. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. Martin did get the penalty, and it was for roughing. Well, I don't know, uh, Bob. I guess you could have called that anything. He did uh, throw a pretty good check. Could have called it boarding or charging. But anyway, the Leafs, they, they continue to be very aggressive, hit for hit with the Flyers, but now they find themselves... All right, there you go. There was a correction. It is a boarding call. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That makes you feel a lot better, doesn't it? But now they find themselves two men short. And again, let's watch this Flyers power play. They haven't really done anything tonight. It's not to the line. Philadelphia's prop right on it. Prop gets set. Looks over to Wilson. Wilson back to prop. Closing in. The shot. And that shot was wide. Wilson has the rebound. Wilson let it go. They still no, it's on the goal line. Didn't go in. Everybody thought it was in, but no, it's not in. Wow, is that close? We'll look at that a little later. Right to the line. Did not go over the line. Philadelphia is still in control. Wilson for prop. Well, Philadelphia completely frustrated now. Oh, brother, there's a shot on the goal line again. This time it's in. Yes, sir. It dropped on the goal line and somehow trickled over, and Philadelphia does get that goal. It's 6-2. Yeah, that one did go over, but Leach, he had his hands raised, and before the game, he said, I'm going to get two goals tonight. Looks like he had his first one. There's the movement by the Flyers. You watch it go right in front. Clark is whacking at it. That's the goal that counted. I believe Sarah knocked it over the line. Now let's watch this one. <laughs> you know, you talk about good camera work. This is the one that's There's Leach. He's still talking to himself. He figured he should have had the other one, but Salming hooked it right out of the net. Clark from Bill Barber and Reg Leach. Time, 5.23. 5.23, and Clark, the credit for the goal. It's 6-2 to two now. Toronto's lead, cut by one, and they have a four-goal lead. Toronto, six. Philadelphia, two. Flyers coming at the Maple Leafs now. Morrison gets in front. Can't find it. Cleared back of the net. Right in front it comes. They whack away at it. Down goes Picard, and he manages to hold it, smothering the puck. And there's no further play. I get a chance to see that one dropping on the goal line. I'd like to see it again. There it is. All right, now watch Reg Leach to the left of the screen. There's a the deflection. Now he's got the whole open net. You judge to see if that goes in. Salming comes the other way, Clarky. Uh, Could, couldn't really tell, but the red light didn't go on, and uh, the goal judge had a pretty good view of it. But and Salming, so did Newell. He was right in on the line, Gary, just to the right of, of Syrah. Judge rocking things, but boy, Salming was quick on that play and hooked it out of the net. Newell was there, waving his arms. No, play on. And Saginaw is doing just that now for the Leafs as he shoots it in. Back to the net, Morrison. For prop, he has stopped. Once again, it comes to Saginaw, and he was muscled off the play, and the Philadelphia Flyers, Morrison, coming to center. Morrison. Knocked down by Salming. 
And they get their sticks up. The play is called, and they're going again this time. It's Morrison against Boschman. Mari Boschman is taking a, a good piece of physical punishment tonight, and really he's not that type of hockey player. This time from Gary Morrison. Look at New move back. Ron Asselstein and Scampanello. Look at this. That's Asselstein. I don't think he's in a very good position right now. Well, Boschman has come out of his shell a bit, and he wants to get back at Morrison. Crozier directing traffic <laughs> over there. <laughs> I'd love to hear what he is saying. Look at this. Well, Dave Newell has just signaled either misconducts or game misconducts. So you can bet both of those guys are going to be out. So once the linesmen go in between, the referee wants everybody to just cool down and break them up. But they continue to try to get involved. And With a score, Toronto 6, Philadelphia 2. This is Hockey Night in Canada. deep freeze which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds so you don't want to get caught in there yeah sounds like it yeah all right oh no way well you gotta do what you gotta do yeah oh, i know okay moving on stanfield's polar therm winter underwear for men I don't like to brag, but I do have the hardest shot. I think I have the hardest shot. The Raider gun is broken. Leafs fans, head down to Air Canada Centre on December 6 to 12 p.m. and watch as your Leafs compete for bragging rights in the 2009 Toronto Maple Leaf Skills Competition, presented by Rogers. Proceeds from the day's activities will benefit the MLSE Team Up Foundation and the NHLPA Goals and Dreams Fund. For tickets, call 416-872-5000 or visit Ticketmaster.ca. Come out and watch us compete, and we'll let you be the judge. Toronto leading 6-2, to two, and it's taking a few seconds now to get this thing ironed out. Here's how it started. Well, right against the boards, and that's where most of the action has come. Boschman throws a good shoulder into Morrison, and then it didn't take very long for the players to get involved. Five minutes for fighting, a 10-minute misconduct. Toronto penalty to number 12, Lori Boschman. Five minutes for fighting, a 10-minute misconduct. Time, 6.15. For Philadelphia, Gary Morrison, five minutes for fighting, a 10-minute misconduct. For Toronto, Laurie Boschman, five minutes fighting, a 10-minute misconduct. Time, 6.15. Well, we're going to see that replay one more time, and just watch how some of the fans get involved there. Right along the boards, the fan will get up and grab the stick. There it is right there. I think I'll take that home and hang it on the wall. Goodbye. <laughs> Souvenir. Great stuff. Why not? We have more action in Montreal. Let's go there now and have a look at this goal. Through and LaRouche winds up with the puck at first, but LaFleur up there with him as they crisscross at the Vancouver line. Here's LaFleur shooting. He <laughs> Here at the Montreal well, quite a combination here. LaRouche and LaFleur. Perfect drop pass, just leaving it for LaFleur. And he does something that uh, has antagonized goalies for years. His first goal this year. And the Canadians, 4-1 to one over Vancouver. Here at 6-2, to two, the Maple Leafs on top of Philadelphia with 13-35 left in the game. Five breaks it in for Drago, who shoots it back at the Philadelphia net. Comes right back to Bridgman. Here's Bridgman starting away. A long right wing pass to Gorenz. Gorenz across center, having difficulty controlling it. 
The Philadelphia Flyers, Bridgman, a high rising shot grabbed by Sira. And he takes no chances and hangs on to this one with the Flyers drooping in. Well, right through the center of the ice now. Bridgman will be cutting along the side to pick up that loose puck. Watch him go from his backhand to the forehand and a high riser. Now at that time, Sira is right in the net. And he didn't really come out and challenge that time. And I really think that's when you get yourself in trouble. Referee Dave Newell has gone to the official bench. I think we're getting more penalties. This game is coming to you from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Okay, ladies. Thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do Ice Girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh... You know what I'd like? A big salad. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports. Your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. Well, more penalties. There you see Rick Five getting into the penalty box. And Buzneck of Philadelphia. He's already there. Philadelphia so then leads to number 28, Mike Buzniak. Two minutes on sportsmanlike conduct, a 10 minute misconduct. For Toronto, number two, Ian Turnbull. Two minutes on sportsmanlike conduct, a 10 minute misconduct. Time, 6.45. Well, Dave Newell has his hands full tonight. Two minutes on sportsmanlike conduct, and a 10 minute misconduct. For Toronto, Ian Turnbull. Two minutes on sportsmanlike conduct, and a 10 minute misconduct. Time, 6.45. Face off coming up in the leaf zone. Here it is. Picard goes back to the net. Toronto six, Philadelphia two. This is Picard working his way out slowly with the help now of Parrish across center, shooting it in. Wilson coming back. That's Peters in the net. Flipped it up on the left side. Philadelphia, Al Hill stopped by Sittler. Sittler knocked down near the line by Hill. As he threw it into the corner. Now Hill gets a chance to move it down the ice and race after it. Here he comes. And he had a stick lifted, couldn't move on it. And Picard tucked it away and center ice is Sittler. Coming in with Paymon. A pass to the other wing and Picard was home free. But it was offside. Toronto 6, Philadelphia 2. 12 and a half left in the game. Philadelphia completely frustrated by Toronto Maple Leafs tonight. Barber fell to the ice and Salmi playing his usual type strong hockey game. It's fed out to Gerlegel. He took the shot that was deflected by Daly into the crowd. This is Danny Gare of the Buffalo Sabres inviting you to join Hockey Night in Canada next week as we visit the Forum in Montreal for a big game against the Canadians. It's Coast to Coast Saturday, October 25th, the Buffalo Sabres and the Montreal Canadiens on Hockey Night in Canada. Don't miss the game. I'm sure I won't. Okay, Danny Gare, but fair warning. 
The Canadians seem to have caught fire. And they're flying over there in the forum tonight. It should be a good one next Saturday. Here's Bobby Clark coming in with Leach. Great shot by Leach. Hip the side of the net. Leach going back of the net. He has it, trying to knock it in from the short side and cannot. Solving. Put off stride a bit, but Gerlego was there to help. The pass comes to Duras up to center, and that's Hickey. Hickey coming in, and he still has it. Hickey racing to the other side. Whipped it over in front. Gerlego had been knocked down, and that's Barber with the puck. Barber coming out for Philadelphia. At center ice is Wilson. Back to Barber. A lot of room there. Barber! And a shot lifted a little too high. Duras stayed right with him. Wilson from center ice. The Barber again, away offside is Daly. And the play is called. Well, what do you know? We've, we've gone about a minute and a half and there hasn't been a penalty called. Frank Bave. Flyers are a little short back behind the blue line. They missed Jimmy Watson. He's out with a recurring back injury. Spasm is in the back and his situation is kind of a game to game. That's one guy they can't afford to miss for a long period of time. And they miss Lindsman, no question. He's the real pepper pot for the Philadelphia Flyers. Gets everything going. Philadelphia Flyers, Gorin speeding it around the net. Bridgman in front, wrapped at it. And Sarah was right there to block it. Back for Gavin for Toronto Maple Leafs. Coming in with Sittler. Sittler sets him up for a shot. And the shot away wide. Sittler gets it from the goal post. There's Gavin after it. And he can't find it. Sittler was very fast moving in. But he hit the post. There's Sittler again. Breaking for the net. Took a shot. And it's knocked right back by Peters. Now Paymont let a drive go. The rebound. Gavin. A backhand shot. And that was just wide. And it goes down the ice. Coming back is Robert Picard. An icing called against Philadelphia. And here in Toronto, the Maple Leafs lead Philadelphia 6-2. to two. Mick Leach takes a shot, put it right on as we welcome the viewers who are watching the Montreal-Vancouver game. And there's a great play by Syrah, the goaltender for Toronto Maple Leafs. He's been very steady tonight. Now let's watch Daryl Sittler on a turnaround there, come right in front of the net. Didn't look like he had much of an angle. Got by Peters, but the goalpost was in the way. Peters is playing in the third period here in place of Phil Mir. Toronto scoring three times in the first period, three times in the second for this 6-2 to two lead. Philadelphia at one point trading 6-1. to one. They've scored here in the third. Now Saginaw coming down the right side for Toronto. A long shot, didn't get very far. It was blocked by Bave, and it goes back to the center ice area. Another long shot from center by Salming. That's Saginaw letting it go back to the line. Anderson gave it to him again. Back of the net. And Salming coming in. Took a weak shot. Peters stopped that. It comes to Salming a second time. Now Anderson, screen shot. That's blocked. Another shot, another shot. And Martin and Saginaw had two great chances. Couldn't get it through. Six to two, Toronto leading. We've had a lot of penalties in this hockey game. Total in minutes, 173, 95 of those minutes against Philadelphia. It's six to two, though, up on the board as the Flyers are offside. Bobby Clark called inside the Maple Leaf line. Live from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, this is Hockey Night in Canada. It's the biggest staircase that I've ever seen. It was just immense. And we had to get this sofa in there, so I found a strength that I... 10 o'clock. And ladies... Oh, my gosh. It's him. Who? Him? Don't look. Cute. Look at me. <laughs> Introducing Molson Canadian 67, a premium light beer with 67 calories. Well, cheers, everyone. That's about half the calories of wines or mixed drinks. So you can have a little, or you can have it all. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. 
or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. Cole along with Gary Dornhofer at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto with the Leafs leading six to two with nine minutes and ten seconds left of the hockey game Wilson played it back to his own line Bayes up for Barber Barber coming in for Philadelphia and Clark waited and Barber was offside it's been all Toronto tonight though Gary your old team Philadelphia they just don't look as tough as they used to or is it the Leafs are just more physical well, what Joe had, uh, Crozier had talked about at the beginning of the game, about the defense having to stand up and not allowing the Flyers to penetrate, they've done that. And also, the fact that the Flyers, he feels, are very weak behind their blue line, and we have to forecheck them, and they got numerous chances, and that's why they have the six goals. Well, the Leafs have been hitting throughout this entire hockey game, check for check, with the Flyers. And they've been scoring, as you can see by the scoreboard now, 6-2, to two, Toronto Maple Leafs. That's Bays, number five for Philadelphia. Losing it, getting another chance to move it ahead, and he did. Leaps for Barber, and Barber had it poked away by Shan. Gavin, number 17, with Derlego speed again. Derlego's shot is stopped by Peters. Mears started the game for Philadelphia, played the first two periods. Peters here in the third for the Flyers. Now Picard. Across center with that pass. It's slashed in by Derlego, and he races on a change to the Maple Leaf bench. They're changing now all around as the play goes on. And here's Barber coming out with Bridgman in with Leach. It's knocked away again this time by Salmi. Sitter couldn't get away from that check by Burns. And Bridgman takes over for Philadelphia. The pass down the wing is offside. And Prop appeared to be home free, but offside call. Now Brian Prop is having a little trouble getting going this year. Coach Pat Quinn had said that he's getting the opportunities, but he's just not able to score the goals. You know, he's in a, right on the goaltender, just can't put it by him. Those are the same chances that he was putting in last year. You don't really believe in a sophomore jinx, though, do you? Huh? Well, it has been known to happen. To a lot of players. To, to a lot of players, yes. There's a pass intercepted at the line and cleared out the center ice, and Bridgman is away with Gorenz. Lawrence feeds it back in front. Bridgman went after it, so did Barnes. But Salvin, who has played a strong game for Toronto tonight, just shoots it to center ice. Now Salvin is going back. No icing will be called of this one. It was tipped near center ice. Salvin back to the net. Came on on the line with Sittler. And Maloney now on the left side. Don't move it out. A quick shot by Lawrence is grabbed by Sira. And the goaltender taking no chances. We're going to get more penalties now. And I'm telling you, we're going to get quite a few this time. It started back with the net. Came on, looked as if he was going with somebody, and then Bridgman was in quickly. And you can see it for yourself. There are quite a few mixed up in this one. So Dave Newell will have quite a time unraveling this little tangle. Well, that's the reason that it's quarter to 11 for the... Hockey fans that joined us from watching the Canadians in Vancouver. This has been going on all night. Got to tell you, it's, it's, it's what? 12-15 in Newfoundland. <laughs> that that they, tells it all, does it not? Well, that's just about all they're doing now. Light wrestling. I think from a flyer standpoint, it's a case of being totally frustrated. Uh, Clark looks on because it... It has been that kind of a night. The Leafs have dominated in every area. The corners in front of the net, the passing. Eddie Milliken, our statistician tonight, just passed me the score sheet. Eddie, I can't read this thing. It's, oh, penalties. How many minutes are we up to now in this hockey game? I'll give you the scores. Boschman, Hickey, and Salving. Here it comes again down back of the net. They don't want to stop. That's Bridgman. Scored in the first. 
for Toronto Barber, for Philadelphia Hickey, Vive, and Anderson in the second. And Clark for Philadelphia here in the third. It's six to two, and we're getting more penalties. As you can see, Maloney, who has not been used very much tonight, Gary, but he's the one to uh, stabilize the way Philadelphia has been coming on in this third period with, with the physical play. With a score, Toronto six, Philadelphia two. This is Hockey Night in Canada. And over here we have our industrial size deep freeze, which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade. Now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds, so you don't want to get caught in there. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Oh, no way. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay, moving on. Stanfield's Polytherm. Winter underwear for men. The greatest film saga of all time and the greatest film music ever composed come together in a spectacular live event. Star Wars in concert, featuring the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra, massive high-def screens, original movie props. Relive the saga as never before. November 26th at Air Canada Centre. Reserve seat tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotia Bank. minutes for roughing. Time 12.41. For Philadelphia, Mel Bridgman. Well, we roughing. only got minor penalties. For Toronto, Dan Maloney, roughing. Time 12.41. And it's another four minutes, so we now have a total of 177 penalty minutes in this hockey game, Gary. Look at Prozier. That is a strange call. Just two minutes for both players for roughing, because everybody got involved behind the net. Now Dave Newell is trying to explain the whole situation to Bob Daly. Well, Bridgman of Philadelphia got two minutes for roughing. Maloney of Toronto, two minutes for roughing. And everybody was into it back of the net. We're going to have another look at it. It happened right behind the net. Maloney, there's the check against the boards. But now watch Bridgman come in. That's, that looks like and now a... now Turnbull and now Sittler. And here's Paymont coming in. It's called pile on. <laughs> well, the Leafs have nullified everything Philadelphia trying to do tonight. They won it in the very first period, scoring three times, adding three in the second. And here in the third period, Clark has scored for Philadelphia. It's six to two, Toronto leading. Some final scores for you, Montreal, 4-1 to one over Vancouver. The Fleur with that first one. Look at uh, Calgary go to town. Boy, oh, boy. And Hartford and Detroit continues to flounder. Look what the Capitals did to the Rangers. And Buffalo ahead. Boston losing again. And then a late start, the Kings at home against Colorado. Of the face-off, it's flipped up high over the net, back of the goal, into the corner. Hill trying to work it loose, but it, they got a whistle. If you're thinking about records and penalty minutes, we're up to, what did I say, 177. The record in penalty minutes, most penalties, most penalty minutes, both teams, one game, 380. Oh, we're not even close. L.A. and you know the other team involved? Probably Philadelphia. You're right. <laughs> Back in 74. Leaks trying to move it out, can't do it. Coming in is Wilson, and Hill in front of the net didn't get the pass. Duras just got a stick in the way and tipped it in time. What a great defensive play by Duras there, and that's one reason that uh, Crozier really likes that guy. What he does behind the blue line, good defensively. There's Wilson coming up, laid it in for McLeish. McLeish 
Couldn't get very far. Hickey feeds it ahead. Durlego was stopped. And the goaltender, Peters, was out just to flip it up on the boards. We have 6.30 left in the hockey game. And it's Toronto on top of it. Coming back to the line for Juris. Faked one man, gave it to Farish. Into the corner, Durlego for Hickey. Hickey has two goals tonight, couldn't shoot this one. And Philadelphia, right in front was Murray to tip it away. That's Murray, number 24, coming out on the right side. He got as far as the line, and then when he hit center ice, just cleared it in on the board. Sierra back to the net, waiting for Picard. Here he comes, Robert Picard, speeding up to center ice. He handles the puck very well, cleared it into the corner boards, and Peters steered it back to the net. Barnes couldn't move it out. Card kept it in for Sittler, into the corner it goes. Paymont back to the line, there's the shot, the rebound comes right back to Paymont. Paymont looks at Farish, doesn't pass, it took the shot, Peters stopped it, and Barber will bring it out. Gets it handed back to him. Farish covering up, Sittler going in after Burns, and Barnes to Daly. That one went right by Sittler. Barnes has to come back. 5.20 left in the game. Toronto 6, Philadelphia 2. Here's Daly. The long pass to center ice. Barber was stopped by Maloney. Those penalties having been served. Daly shooting it in off the board. Sarah out of the net. Clearing it into the corner for Dan Maloney. Starting up for Toronto with Sittler. Here's Maloney to center ice. Took a long shot in away wide of the net. Once again, Maloney ran into his man along the boards. And they begin to rough it up again now with Salming. Backing up near his own line with Turnbull. Turnbull, a long pass didn't go very far. Now it's up for Sittler. He was bumped by Burns. Saginaw got it in front. And there. It's grabbed quickly by Kerr. Up on the line for Leach. Kerr training the play, but with Anderson. And Turnbull just passes it off to Salming. It's tipped by Martin, who's offside. And it's called back. Well, two on one break. Watch Duras break this one up. There's the interception at the blue line. Just right in the middle and then Anticipates the pass and deflects it to his teammate. That's what you want to try to do in a two-on-one for defenseman. Try to play right in the middle of the two defenders. How about the Calgary Flames? 6-2 final. Well, they had a three-game homestand and they won them all. Buffalo a final tonight against Pittsburgh. Four to two. Okay, Gary. Now, Murray from center, in with Leach. He has that great shot, remember? There it is, and just wide of that far post. That'll be offside. The Lions can race Campanello right on the job. Wilson trying to get away with it, but no luck. Well, Ray couldn't have got any closer than he was in that play, about two feet away from it. Boy, when Leach winds up. Oh. You know, he parted my hair once in Buffalo. I was standing in front of the net, and there's a power play. He let one go. I couldn't move. It just took the skin off the top of my head. You know where I'd be today if that would have hit me? What do you mean you couldn't move? You're standing in the goal crease I, again, I was, and now you're telling me you couldn't move. Couldn't move. That's good. Okay, Dorney. I believe you. Toronto 6, Philadelphia 2. Here come the lead. Smart going in with Anderson. He picked the short side and missed it. Back to the net. Anderson now sees it. Fed it over in front. Saganuk is there. So is Martin. But it's broken up by Murray up to center ice. Salming and Turnbull. Turnbull from center. Dipped it into the Philadelphia zone. Three and a half minutes left in the game. Toronto six. Philadelphia two. Coming out. The Philadelphia Flyers. Leach looking for the pass from Hill. He doesn't get it. And that's why he's offside of that far left wing, right? That's absolutely right, Bob. You know, let's mention something about as we look at Sierra at the other end. Pete Peters. Now he came in this third period and he hasn't allowed any goals. And he's, he's a real stand up goaltender. He's a classic goaltender to watch. Very rarely does he flop down. There's Pete Peters. And you know, when you're getting blown out, one thing that you want to try to do is at least win one period. So far, the Flyers are doing that. They are ahead 1 0 in the third period. Perhaps that will carry them over to the next game. Toronto leading by four, it's six to two with 3.23 left in this hockey game. Shan with Duras on the lead defense. 
Bain bumped with Hickey. Bridgman didn't wait long enough. Hill is offside this time. And it's called at the leaf line. It's been an entertaining hockey game. At one point, they were four aside, and it was wide open. Went for about two minutes, up and down, and great goaltending. Exciting hockey. It settled back into a bit of a shell here in the late minutes of this game, where the Leafs leading by four, and completely frustrating the Flyers tonight in every department. Court checking, defensively, scoring, of course, and hitting. They have been tough and physical. I think, Gary, you'll agree. Every area of the game. And that's something that I know the fans here in Toronto were wondering about this year. The big question, of course, was Sira. Would he be an NHL goaltender and make the people forget about uh, Mike Palmatier? And perhaps the first few games, he was fighting it a little bit, thinking about that himself. They talk about, Gary, a goaltender has to be seen a number of times by each team before you can really say what he's going to be like. You believe in that, I suppose? Oh, sure. But he's been standing up. There it is, right to the side of the net. And Picard takes it for Toronto. Looks for the opening, gets it up to center. Murray for Philadelphia. Barber trying to barrel in and falls. Picard coming after him. There's going to be a penalty to Toronto Maple Leafs. There's the whistle. And who will it be? Picard going off. Came on arguing with Mule, the referee. No, it's the hook. Oh, no, it's not the card. It's It'll Farish. Be Farish. So Farish of Toronto goes with 2.27 left. We'll Wait. see it. There at the top of the circle, Barber trying to gain possession. He's hooked from behind. And we're up to 179 minutes in penalty now. You know, taking that a step further, Bob, about, uh, you know, taking advantage of weaknesses. You know, if a, if a player for, let's take a goaltender, is bad in the glove hand. Uh, certainly players are going to try and shoot at his glove hand. Same with the uh, defenseman. If he's beat to the outside, why go to the inside when you can beat him to the outside? The word gets around. In back of the net, Philadelphia trying to get something going in the late stages of this game. Tim Kerr to the corner. That's Salming in possession. Salming loses it. McLeish gives it to Wilson. Wilson has to turn around. Rolled it right in front of Barber. His backhand shot. There's Kerr getting it back near the line. And again, Juris was there. Defeated off the boards to center right. 155 left of the game. That's Prop bumped on the board. Prop still with it, though. Cleared it up back to the neck. Philadelphia trying to jam it in from the short side. Down goes Sarah. And he was lucky, really, to hang on to that one. It kind of came from the short side in front of him where he could grab it. And he moved away from the post and was just laying there, but the defense covered up. Again, Coach Joe Crozier electing to go with four defensemen while killing this penalty. That's a real workload for your defensemen. 144 left of this one. Toronto with three goals in each of the first two periods. Philadelphia getting one in the first. Clark is scoring. Here in the third. Prop fakes the shot into Barber. Barber, a pass over on this side. Wilson in too deep. Comes back near the line. Wilson left it for Prop again. The Leafs set up that box. Playing it well. It's cleared into Barber. Barber on a sharp angle and can't shoot it. They're trying to work somebody free. And that's Barber hanging on to it. Back for Prop. Better shoot it now. A high shot off the glass. Wilson, a sharp angle, can't shoot it. Now McLeish, there's his screen shot. That was stopped by Salming. Again, Wilson with it. Salming backs up a step or two. Wilson winding up. What do they do? The shot is on. And Sira stops the play by hanging on to it. Oh, that's still the best play, uh, Bob, to try to work that puck around to your defenseman and unload it low and have the man in front of the net. Unless you can try and sneak a guy in that slot area. But the team's... Most of the teams play that box. See the Flyers, they just couldn't get anybody in front. Sierra saw it all the way. Barber was trying to get, get in there. Let's look at Sierra, the way he follows the play. You notice Barber sneaking in there, but he's really not doing the job screening. He's on the outside. Sierra got a label of that one and held it, as you say. 
Barber had moved another step. Right. You know, I like the way I, I watched the Bruins play. They got Bork and Park on there, and every time the puck gets back to the point, they unload it. And they have sometimes two guys going for the net for that deflection. Well, it's 105 left of the game, so it's all but over. Toronto over Philadelphia, 6 to 2. Daly just inside the line. Daly, a minute left now. Clark tying up Shand. It comes to Daly. Daly back for Leach. He'll shoot it. There it is, right on. And Sarah picked out the leg and stopped it. And Hickney, who has scored twice tonight for Toronto, backhands it down the ice. 43 seconds left to play. This is Leach. In on the wing goes Hill, breaking for the net. Trying to roll it in, and Shand was all over him and tied him up effectively. Long pass by Daly. Didn't hit Leach. And the Leach shoot at the center with 25 seconds left. Here's Daly coming in with fire. Paymont bumping with Daly. And into the corner, Shan. Stopped at the line by Burns. His low shot is wide of the net. And it's Paymont. Daly took him out of the play. Here's Shan shooting it in for Toronto. Eight seconds left. The fans counting down now this victory for the Maple Leafs over Philadelphia Flyers. Picard has it. The game is over. And Toronto Maple Leafs, who came out in a rush, scoring three in the first, adding three in the second, allowing Philadelphia one in the first and third, one it going away, Toronto six, and Philadelphia two. And in just a moment, our three-star selection. Okay, ladies, thanks for trying out for the Ice Girls today. We'll have our decision shortly. In the meantime, any questions? Yes. How often do ice girls get status updates on player injuries? Concussions, hamstrings, various spasms? No? Uh... You know what I'd like? A big salad. Pride. Excitement. Style. It's all in the jersey. You can wear what the pros wear. Take a stance. Visit Center Sports and customize your Leafs jersey. Best team selection. Official team merchandise. Newest Leafs gear. Center Sports, your only destination for all of your athletic official Leafs merchandise. Located at Air Canada Center, Gate 1. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. Ladies and gentlemen, here are tonight's Molson Cup three stars as selected by Hockey Night in Canada. The first star, Pat Hickey. The second star, Lori Boschman. And the third star, Borja Salming. We'll return with Hockey Night in Canada in just a moment. Leafs win it by a score of 6-2 to two over the Philadelphia Flyers. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. This is it. This is what a perfect moment feels like. It's brilliant. Fantastic. Love it. Don't let nothing spoil it. I wonder what's for dinner tonight. Oh, shoot. The Lexus ES350. Pursue the moment.
industrial size deep freeze, which maintains a consistent temperature of minus 55 degrees centigrade. Now that's enough to freeze your skin in a matter of seconds, so you don't want to get caught in there. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. All right. Oh, no way. Well, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Oh, I know. Okay, moving on. Stanfield's Polar Therm, winter underwear for men. The Leafs win it by a score of 6-2, to two, but uh, things would start to fall apart around December. Joe Crozier would end up being fired. Uh, the MLAC uh, influence on the team would be uh, that much more oppressive, I guess is the word that uh, uh, many would do. Of course, Daryl Sittler's situation would uh, get magnified even more. Uh, the team would make the playoffs but get dusted off by the first place New York Islanders. So it was a, a, a real difficult year, I think, from this point on. Yeah, I think uh, I remember Punch coming to me asking me about Mike Nikolak. That's when Mike Nikolak came in, and uh, and and that was that was exciting. And Mike was fresh, and he was basically protege of Fred Shiro. So there there was a lot of ex a lot of excitement there. But I think there were still some changes to come, and uh, and we never really got uh, like peaked for the playoffs, as they say. Pat, what uh, what keeps you busy these days? Well, I'm a financial advisor, investment advisor with CIBC World Markets uh, out of Hamilton, Ontario, and I deal with private client investments and corporate corporate accounts and I get to go to New York every once in a while and stay in touch with uh, a major in economics at McMaster University. Never got my degree or anything else but I like to play with numbers and uh, you know, did you know how many shots it takes to score a goal, Joe? One. No. No? Six. Six? Oh, Every six that? shot goes in the net. Oh, wow. Well, see, now statistics. I'm not, not so kids, statistics. So kids, think about that. Shoot Hit it the six net times. And don't be afraid to shoot it. And you'll be all right. Yeah. And you're involved with alumni as well. And uh, I'm on the board of the New York Ranger alumni, and I, uh, and I do a lot of things with the Leaf alumni, too. And uh, Stuart Gavin was the president, so we've done some things there. And then there's the NHL alumni, and I'm an advisor for the Rangers on that, on that board, too. Mm -hmm. So we keep with the, we have about six charity tournaments that we get involved with, and uh, Raises a lot of money for charities from starlight to fighting blindness, but at the end of the day, you get 35 or 50 guys getting together to tell stories That's like we've told today. And a lot of them, and we enjoyed them today, too. Pat, thanks Great. for being with us. Pat Hickey has joined us. We've taken him back to October 18, 1980, as the Toronto Maple Leafs dusted off the Philadelphia Flyers 6-2. to two. You're watching Molson Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leafs TV. This portion of Leafs TV is brought to you by Bergmanis Prayra LLP. Personal injury lawyers on your side. This is football. One of the best goals you will ever see. As far as Cheek is concerned, that is called rubbing your noses in the dirt. Skin on goal, look at that pass. Hang on. Goal, Columbus. Goal TV Canada. Call your local service provider to subscribe today. There's a subject that many men avoid talking about. A subject that can get in the way when the right moment happens. It's a common condition known as erectile dysfunction. And about 40% of men over the age of 40 experience some form of it. Ask your doctor which daily or on-demand treatment is right for you. Or visit 40over40.ca for more information. When the moment is right, you can be ready. My husband has this crazy notion that now is a good time to invest with all this uncertainty. He keeps talking about opportunity and things going up in the long run. Could you set him straight? Well, actually, he's right. Here, let me show you. Investment opportunities are out there. A free, no obligation review with a Scotia advisor can help you find them. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Canadian Maple Leaf Classics on Leaks TV. It's a Canadian game. Brought to you by Molson Canadian.
Leafs TV, official station, Leafs Nation.